I didn't have a penny on FTX. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't invest a penny in FTT, right? I mean, from the very beginning, if, if um, people that have any business acumen or background, any legal sense, any ethical training or any technical training in a university, if they would look at this, they would say, yeah, it doesn't make sense to invest in 20,000 random tokens that get spun out of nowhere to trade on an, on an opaque offshore exchange with nearly infinite leverage, right? Doesn't make sense. Bitcoin, not crypto. <laughs> That's the lesson. I, I, I think um, this week highlights the contrast between uh, the virtues of Bitcoin and the vices of crypto. And it illustrates the wisdom of Satoshi. So if we go back to first principles, uh, the entire Bitcoin movement got started because of a loss of faith in the currency and a loss of faith in banks. And so this has gone on for, since time immemorial, banking crisis that froze customers' funds and currency crisis that collapsed their purchasing power. And Bitcoin was, was created as a currency that couldn't be debased, running on an open network so you could be your own bank. And the principle is, if you're your own bank and, the current, and no one has discretion to debase the currency, then you're not going to wake up one morning and find out that your funds have been seized and they've been devalued to zero. Crypto uh, and the entire movement is almost like the reinvention of fiat currency and, and uh, fractional reserve banking. But instead of it being in a regulated environment, it's just in an unregulated environment. So ironically, we saw the same human behaviors here. And so this is a teachable moment because the solution is uh, don't put your value in currencies that are controlled by human beings. You can't trust the CEO, you can't trust the company, and you can't trust a, a custodian. And if there's a counterparty, it's credit, it's not money. And Bitcoin is nobody's liability. There is no counterparty. Anyone that joins the network is their own banker. Uh, the reason it's money is because no human being or no organization has discretion over it. So, and if anything, uh, all of the Bitcoin memes have come back to life, not your keys, not your coins. That This is an incredibly expensive lesson mm -hmm. in basic fundamentals of monetary theory and banking and uh, a principled way forward with your investments. I think uh, he caught, got caught up in this entire crypto wave and it was much bigger than him and everything happened very, very fast. And, and in this particular case, it's still not even clear to him what happened. I, he's probably, he'll probably register this or figure out what happened some number of years afterwards. So I think, the humility of Satoshi is the observation that no one can carry the burden of that trust. Satoshi can't, no company, no board of directors, no government, no political process. At the point that you conclude that no one has the, the strength of character and, and wisdom and commitment uh, to carry the burden of a billion people's money, then you realize that the solution is put the control of that into the hands of nature. Submit yourself to nature's laws and to the laws of mathematics and, and then put it into, into the hands of uh, a software that's not just a software program running on a machine, but a software protocol running on millions of machines. Bitcoin is the first example of, of a successful monetary protocol that was released and in the first year or two or three years, it, it, it could have been smashed out of existence or could have failed. And now we're fortunate enough to actually see that it has grown to maturity and it is working and, and it is the best choice in this crypto carnage. And for those who have clear vision, and they can see through uh, the sound and the fury and the chaos, they'll see that um, Satoshi was wiser than they realized. Um, 
Satoshi said something, you know, very uh, seminal at the very beginning of this entire movement. <laughs> yeah. The, the root cause of all these collapses is the trust that is required mm -hmm. and that trust has been betrayed over and over and over again. I think that Bitcoiners have, have, uh, have had a very clear vision and that's because they move forward in a principled fashion. And, and uh, if you didn't uh, buy the altcoins, if you didn't put your money in uh, a crypto exchange, then you didn't fall short. You did the best you could do for yourself, for your family, for your friends, for your followers. Um, I, there's been an, a never ending campaign on behalf uh, by Bitcoiners uh, to convince people uh, not to trust, run your own node, take responsibility for your own actions, hold your own keys, support uh, an ethical, uh, decentralized, fair, transparent protocol. And I would say that we've, uh, you know, we can look at it as, well, we failed because we didn't convince everybody in the crypto world to adopt mm -hmm. Bitcoin. But you can also look at it as we succeeded because we, had, we got the most number of people mm -hmm. and the most amount of money to adopt Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. And so Bitcoin is still the dominant crypto asset network uh, in terms of number of holders, in terms of, of value, and in terms of the amount of value stored on the chain. And so I've only been in it for about two and a half years. I observe that we are making great headway with mainstream investors and mainstream media. And we're also making great headway with uh, the crypto bros <laughs> and, uh, you know, all the crypto degens, everyone that said, I got to trade this altcoin yeah. or I got to trade on that or I need leverage. And, and uh, you know, they made fun of the Bitcoin maximalist mm -hmm. and, the, and the ones that want to self custody. And I think that uh, now you won't find anybody in the crypto industry that would make fun of uh, Bitcoin's principled mm -hmm. approach. Right. And I think that if you go on CNBC and you look at the conversations, the conversations are clearly, you know, we can't really be trusting these wildcat, you know, wild west crypto casinos. And we need to we need to be more responsible. The industry needs to grow up. Bitcoin is the greatest execution of the idea of a digital commodity because it is not just a commodity. It's a scarcity. It's an asset without an issuer that's absolutely capped. Um, the second, and, and it has a role, right, as a long-term store of value or as a base layer for the digital economy or the entire world economy in the future. There's a second good idea. A digital currency like the dollar that can move on an Android phone or an iPhone at the speed of light between 8 billion people in order to allow cross-border payments, cross-border remittances. Give an entitlement or access to the dollar mm -hmm. to people in Argentina or Cuba or North Korea or Nigeria where mm -hmm. they're without. And so there are probably one to two billion people in the world that have access to the dollar through the 20th century banking system. There are six billion people in the world that do not have access to the dollar. They are disenfranchised, they are unbanked, and they are suffering. So there, there has been a demand for that digital dollar. It, it manifested itself in the growth of Tether and Circle. That, uh, that uh, idea, right, looks a little bit degenerate to someone on the Upper East Side of New York City who's a trust fund baby mm -hmm. with a JP Morgan account. But if you're living in Nigeria and the banks can't be trusted and the government devalued your currency and you're looking at starving to death mm -hmm. or the same in Venezuela, I think what surprised me uh, the most is, is fairly intelligent uh, people and en entities uh, not realizing everything I just said to you <laughs> fast enough. Right. It, for example, it, it seems quite evident, right? If you were doing, I didn't have a penny on FTX. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't invest a penny in FTT, right? I mean, from the very beginning, if, if um, people that have 
any business acumen or background, any legal sense, any ethical training or any technical training in a university, if they would look at this, they would say, yeah, it doesn't make sense to invest in 20,000 random tokens that get spun out of nowhere to trade on an, on an opaque offshore exchange with nearly infinite leverage, right? It doesn't make sense. But it's, it surprised me that so many otherwise intelligent people put so much money into these things. People will literally lose a billion dollars chasing after these crypto casinos before they'll put a million dollars in Bitcoin. Uh, it's like Bitcoin is too honest, too ethical, too rational. And so the conclusion is I have to skip over that and I have to go for the next thing, the next Bitcoin or the next yeah. good idea. You know, these billion dollar blow ups of Celsius and Voyager and FTX for, uh, for some of them to start to, to get the idea that, that uh, Bitcoin is the innovation. I'm not concerned. In fact, I think that uh, a lot of uh, the pain that the Bitcoin community has absorbed is because of the slow response of the regulators. If the regulators had moved faster in, in order to, uh, if they had moved more aggressively in 2018 or 2019, you wouldn't have seen all of these, you know, crypto casinos spin up the way they've spun up. Um, the, one of two things will happen with regulators. They will either move much more aggressively in a fairly regressive, conservative approach. And that means they'll just shut down all the other crypto innovations, in which case Bitcoin will still be a beneficiary. Because in a conservative world, Bitcoin is the apex crypto property and the apex crypto asset. And people will simply hold it as a long term store of value. And if, if the regulator said everything in the crypto ecosystem is now, you know, forbidden, all you can do is buy Bitcoin and hold it and sell it at the, you know, at the end of its useful life, treat it like gold, <laughs> Bitcoin would still benefit. It's not clear to me which approach is better for Bitcoin. The truth is the, the only thing that, that is clearly good for Bitcoin is if we were able to, de uh, to disentangle ourselves from the crypto casinos, right. right? Because the crash of Terra, the crash of Luna, the crash of Celsius, the crash of FTX, these have been painful uh, events and Bitcoin is cross collateralized and they're selling Bitcoin when they're crashing their, their doggy coins and their hamster coins and their yo-yo coins. And so shutting that down will be good for Bitcoin. It'll take the volatility out of Bitcoin. <laughs>